Hi. So I just want to give you a bit of an update on the Raspberry Pi uh, situation that we're going to be using for a betting bot. And so far, I'm very, very pleased to say it's looking really, really promising. And in a minute, I'm just going to jump in and show you what we've got so far. But first, there are a couple of things I've learned doing this that I want to update you on from the last video. So the first thing is, is I'm actually not going to go through the process of installing Windows on the Raspberry Pi because I found an amazing video guide from someone showing you exactly how to do it. And rather than replicating probably poorly what they've actually shown how to do, I'm going to just put a link below this video to their video so you can watch and follow on how to install Windows 10. It's totally free. You just have to join a group. They give you a download, you install it. It's all totally free. It takes probably about an hour in total to do it. If you're not so technically minded, it might take a little bit longer. But if you just work through it slowly, it's very methodical and everything is shown step by step in the video. So that's the first thing. I'm going to show you how to do that. The second thing is, as well as what I put in my purchase list in the last video, and you can see a link to that last video below, um, as well as what I put in that purchase list to the last video, you're also going to need two other cables that I didn't get. You you're going to need a cable that goes from a micro HDMI into whatever connection your monitor has. And that might be um, a DVI or a VGA. Now you're not going to need this monitor forever. This is just for setting up, but you still need that cable. You are also going to need an Ethernet cable to connect to the internet. You will need that forever. You will need a cable connecting your Raspberry Pi to the internet. Secondly, the other thing that you will need to actually complete this setup is you're going to need access to a Windows machine. And again, you're not going to need that forever, but you do need access to a Windows machine to set up the Raspberry Pi initially. Once you've done the setup, you can put it off and everything will be there, but you will need that initial access. Finally, you're going to need a uh, keyboard and mouse. Um, to do the initial setup with as well. And I recommend you just get a USB cable and mouse. It can be any. Just plug them in temporarily, again, just for this initial setup. So those are the things that you're going to need to be able to complete the setup. The whole setup itself, as I say, doesn't actually take very long, particularly if you've got all those things in place. And as you'll see from uh, in a minute in the video I'm about to show you, um, you won't actually need the monitor plugged in forever. You won't need the um, cables forever. At the end of it, you just plug the Raspberry Pi straight into your router and we access it remotely. And that brings me to point three. We've got to be able to access the Raspberry Pi remotely. And I've done a lot of research into both free tools and paid tools to use. I am going to be using Real VNC. This is a paid tool. However, it is only just over two pounds per month. So it's significantly cheaper than any type of virtual server or remote uh, hosted desktop that you may get. I've chosen this specifically because it is very lightweight. It doesn't use much processing power. So we're conserving um, the resources of your Raspberry Pi that we're going to put the betting bot on. Um, and it's very easy to set up. It's very, very easy easy to use. Um, and again, I'll show you that in just a minute. So those are the things that are going to stand out. And the last thing I'm going to ask is below this video, you're going to see a link to a blog post. On that blog post, I have got all of the betting bot software out there listed. Please go and cast your vote on which one you think I should install on this Raspberry Pi. So please, please, please click that link. Go and vote on the betting bot software that you think I should install on this Raspberry Pi to see if I can get it to work. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all of them to work. So uh, I will look for the one that is most voted for. We'll start with that one and see if I can get it to work. If I can get it to work, that's awesome. If I can't, I'll move to the next most voted for. So um, click on the link below and please do uh, go and vote for the betting bot software you would like to see me install on this Raspberry Pi to see if we can get it to work seamlessly. And don't forget, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Race Advisor YouTube channel, please do hit that subscribe button below now. Okay, so I'm going to jump into my computer. I'm running a Mac. So you can see how I'm going to jump into that Mac and you'll be able to log straight into that Raspberry Pi, straight into a Windows desktop. It works very, very fluidly. It's really smooth. And, uh, and you can see then how I'm hoping we're going to be able to install this betting bot software and have it running at home 24-7 being able to log in remotely from anywhere. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, so here we are um, on my Mac desktop. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice here is I've got a VNC viewer open here. Now, the way real VNC works, you can see I've just taken this out on the trial, um, and, and the way real VNC works is we install a server on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that takes maybe two or three minutes. Uh, you log into your account on it, uh, and you allow access to it. That adds the Raspberry Pi to your real, real VNC account. Then you get the VNC viewer on whatever device you want. It can be, I believe it can be mobile devices, Windows, Macs, Linux, whatever you like. You install the VNC viewer there. You double click on the computer that you want and you enter your login details. And these are the Windows 10 user login details that you have to actually log into Windows on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can save those details and then you'll see it is here on your VNC viewer for you to open whenever you like. Now, this Raspberry Pi is no longer on my desk. It's no longer connected to a computer. It's downstairs, um, a long way away from where my office is. Uh, it's connected directly into the router, just the box, straight into the router with a plug. That is it. There is nothing else connected to it now. And you'll see all I need to do is double click on that Raspberry Pi window. This opens up the real VNC network. It connects straight to it. And here we are inside the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see it here. Okay, and this is now Windows 10. Now, there's a nice little um, rain meter, it's called, in, in the Windows 10 for Raspberry Pi, and this just tells us how much of the Raspberry Pi's power processors are currently being used. And you can see here that it's currently only using one or two percent of the CPU, um, only 13 percent of the RAM. Remember, we went for an eight gig RAM model. Uh, everything else is kind of pretty small. I've only used 27 percent of the 22 gigabytes of storage. Obviously, if you want more storage, this works just off a, an SD card. So if you want more storage, you could replace the SD card one for the other. But remember, you'd have to replicate it across because it's got the operating system Windows 10 on it as well so that's how it works it's very simple as you can see it's just running 24-7 uh, consuming very little power uh, doing very little really there's nothing on it and I'm purposefully not installing anything on it except the betting bot because I want to conserve as much power as possible for that betting bot software um, obviously the Raspberry Pi is not a super powerful machine but I do think it's going to have enough to run a betting bot 24-7 uh, where you can log into it from any anywhere uh, with, without too much effort. But if we start putting lots of other things onto it and installing other things, then there's a, a chance it may not work. So that's it. As you can see here, if I want to make it a bit bigger, uh, I have quite a big window here. I can just scale this up as much as I want like that. Uh, the graphics hold pretty well. There's a little bit of blurring around some of the icons, but it holds pretty well um, considering I've scaled it up significantly. Obviously, the graphics card inside the Raspberry Pi isn't you know super powerful, but it's absolutely good enough for the purpose that we have here. So you can see it's quick, it's effective. Um, so now all we need to do is to decide on what betting bot software we're gonna try. So please click the link below this video, head over to the blog post and cast your vote on the betting bot software you would like to see me try and get working on this Raspberry Pi betting bot system that you can make. So far it's cost me about 115 pounds in total, uh, and that's to have uh, the Raspberry Pi, all of the software on it, get the whole thing set up, and that means for 115 pounds in total, we can connect from anywhere in the world at any time to our Raspberry Pi at home. It's connected to the internet 24 seven via our home internet. Um, and outside of our home internet going down, uh, there's never gonna be an issue. We don't have to pay for any expensive servers or virtual servers or VPNs or any of those things. Um, the only thing extra that we have to pay for is about two pounds 20 a month for the real VNC software to access that Raspberry Pi. And I think that's worthwhile because any of the free software is quite complicated to set up and uses significantly more um, computer resources in its running. Whereas uh, the real VNC is simple to set up and it, uh, as you can see here on the screen, it, it pretty much uses no resources for us to connect to it.
Okay, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, which software you're going to want me to try and install, which betting bot software you're going to want me to try and install. So make sure you place that vote now. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't yet subscribed to the Race Advisor YouTube channel. Thank you.